Hello and welcome to the GCC Innova series of blogs on new features in Sage 200 2010. So in prior blogs we've gone through some of the new features and looked at the new features specifically in the stock area and the sales order processing area. And in this particular one we're going to look at the changes in the purchase order processing area. So if we pull up Sage 200 here, we're in our purchase order list and the main change within purchase order processing is the changes with regards to purchase order authorization. So previously in versions of 200, the authorization consisted of just a blanket monetary amount and the person that could authorize it was the person that had authorized orders on their menu. So not incredibly sophisticated. But in here we had a whole new series of rules within here. So we can create as many rules as we wish to. So if I just open up this particular rule here, it's saying, OK, for purchase orders raised with a value greater than £250 up to £999.99, then for anyone that raises this order, and this, this particular instance I've chosen, if demo raises this order, then the people that can authorise the order are myself and Nick. OK, and that order won't be able to go any further through the system until the authorization has been done. So I'm just going to close that down to demonstrate this. Just bear with me a moment while I log in as a demo user. So I log in as a completely separate user. And then from there, we'll be able to create our order and then come back in as me to be able to authorize the order. So if I come into here, create an order for Atlas, so through to here. Create a freestanding electric, that will do. Come to warehouse and create, uh, say, 20 of those. So we've got £1,600 net value. Save, close, and save there. So save that order through. So that's 5009 So if we just click on refresh to refresh our list, and we've got a not authorized order here, and there's nothing else I can do with that order. I can't print it off, I can't receive goods in or do anything along those lines. So if I now come back to change user and log in as my cell. So depending on how you've got notification set up, the notification may have come through as an email to me saying I need to authorize this purchase order. Alternatively, I can come through and just look within a web version of Sage 200 as to what I need to authorize out here. So I just need to log back in as myself within the web environment. So just needs my username and password and which company I'm wishing to log into. So once again, if I've got an email saying I need to authorize a purchase order, I can include this link. And there we see order 5009. So I'm nowhere near Sage 200 here. I'm wholly within Internet Explorer. So anywhere I can get access to the internet via mobile phone or anything along those lines, as long as I can get access back to my company workspace to authorize this order, I can do. So I can come into 5009 here. I can either authorize the order straight out or reject it and say, I think we only need 18 of these. I can put that onto query. Let's put that on query. It's taken it off my list. If I come back to the demo here, sorry, I log back in of myself. I should have remained in as the demo user. So let me just go back as the demo user. Just let that log through there. Once we get the demo screens back. So we're back in as demo user. So it's now come up as a status of query. So I have a query there. So I can come in to here, put sort of notifications and see what's going on. So I've got a query saying I only think we need no, 18 of these. OK, so that's fair enough. I can close out there, where for my order. OK, so I'm saying could change the authorization status. Do I wish to view the item? No. Well, I actually do want to change the item, so I'm not going to do just view. Come into here, edit the item, drop that down to 18, click on OK. Save again. Notice I could have seen the notifications from the order as well. There, that's gone back through, so that's back at the query stage. So if I come back into 
go sort of notifications and add our new notification. Say OK. Order now amended to 18. And save there. Close. Now coming back to my web browser, I'm just going to refresh back up here. So I've got 5009's back again. I just click on open there and I can see what's going on here. See so the notification history. I can see I'm back down to 18. So my order's now amended to 18, so I can see exactly where I'm going. I need to put that one through. The just changing itself would have done it, but just to clarify that I can do that if I wish to. So that 5009 is fine. I can go through now and authorize that order out. So everything is okay there. That one's been authorized. So if I come back into 200 and do a refresh on my list, that's now an authorized order, 5009, and I can carry on and authorize that through. Uh, process that through, sorry. So in terms of authorization, I can do it through the web. Obviously, I can do it through the 200 if I have access to the 200. If I'm not present, then I can set up an alternative authorizer who will then go through and authorize out my orders for me. So if I happen to be on holiday or something along those lines, then I can do that if I wish to. If I'm just going to log back in as myself here and also you can set up a super user authorization so if I'm off and the alternative person that can authorize my orders is also off then a super user can go in and authorize the uh, orders out as well if we need to so it, you don't really don't want to get into the situation where you're completely stuck because your authorizers aren't available to actually authorize any orders through okay so I'm just waiting for it to log back in as me and I can go through the other changes within 200 so if I come up to purchase orders utilities here and into pop settings there's also been a change in terms of order processing so for my text order lines and my service labor and lines I can now decide not just whether I wish to receive them in or not but how so previously you could only receive them in as a separate item under service free text but now you can actually confirm them with your goods received so you haven't got to go through goods received to book in the stock and then receive in text items to book in the text items as well so if I just open up this order I believe this order has a text line on it yes it does incidentally as you're adding in your text line item you can determine how you want that order line to be received in I'm going to say confirm with goods received there just going to close this order down. That's 5008. So I can come into just regular receive. And here I have my stock item line and my text item line. And the description's down there for the text item line because clearly it's not a stock item there and won't have an item code or a warehouse. So you see the description down here. And I can carry on and receive through as normal. So that's just speeding up the process of receiving in items. Also, just to close out on purchase order processing within pop maintenance maintain analysis codes we've also got the ability to add in the 20 analysis codes as set up in accounting system manager if you're not familiar with this area look at the prior blog on new features within 2010 or the sales order processing feature that will show you how basically you can work these so I can add in up to 20 analysis codes here come into edit and decide how this works. Do I pick, am I allowing people to change the analysis code? Do I get the analysis code from the supplier? And do I file the analysis code in stock transaction history as well? Okay, so that is all the new features within purchase order processing within Sage 200 2010. Thank you for coming to the blog.